Good morning, everyone. All right, well, we'll try that again because I don't think everybody had coffee yet. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. And welcome. I want to say welcome to all of the students, all the bright, shiny faces here, uh, faculty, distinguished guests. And I wanted to let you know, I am Tom Daly with the Small Business Development Center uh, here at Daytona State College. I'm so excited. This is, I am told, I'm, I've only been here two years, but it's actually the 22nd production of Mr. Lemoran's Speaker Series. So pretty exciting, right? <laughs> Furthermore, it was really cool that we were able to do these things online uh, because we had to. But now we're able to be here together, which really warms my heart a bunch and gets me excited about the future. Um, I also wanted to say a huge shout out to the probably many, many more of you that are online and welcome to us. It's going to be a great program today. So it's not about me. I'm just here to introduce the, the really cool people. Uh, but uh, without further ado, what I did want to do is introduce our campus leader and president, Dr. Tom Lavasso. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to see a crowd of uh, students here and guests to uh, kick off our 22nd uh, annual, uh, semi-annual uh, L. Gale Lebron Entrepreneur Speaker Series. So again, welcome and it's exciting to see everyone here this morning and to be hosting the signature event in person again. Our guest speaker today is Harris Rosen, President and Chief Operating Officer of Rosen Hotels and Resorts. I'll give him a, a more formal introduction in just a few minutes. We established a speaker series to serve students who aspire to become innovators and, and uh, future entrepreneurs. It is our hope that the students, such as yourself, gain inspiration in hearing the words of successful business leaders, such as Mr. Rosen, as you begin to take your first steps towards your own career paths. This series was originally founded by a dear friend of the college, Bernie Simpkins who passed away last year. Bernie was a successful Brevard businessman and philanthropist who launched a series at Eastern State, at Eastern Florida State College with which Daytona State has a long time partnership with. Since our founding in 1957, Daytona State has played an important role in preparing students for the careers of tomorrow. Our goal is to provide high quality, affordable education for everyone in this region. <clears throat> With more than 100 certificates, associate bachelor degree programs, we were able to meet the needs of individuals seeking a college education, as well as the needs of employers who rely on well-trained, diverse workforce. Most other institutions cannot match our combination of affordability and quality. And with programs that cover everything from healthcare, to cosmetology, machining, automotive services, to information technology, engineering, business management education, we truly have something for everyone here at Daytona State College. Our graduates have earned more than 110,000 degrees and certificates, and many of them have gone on to become business owners and industry innovators after developing their skills right here at Daytona State. I cannot begin to tell you how thrilled I am to see that them achieve their dreams, and all of us at Daytona State are proud to have played a role in their success. It's now time to introduce <clears throat> the four recipients of the 2021 LKLM Entrepreneurial Speaker Series Scholarships. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Gail Lemon to please join me on stage. Let's give Gail a round of applause. <clears throat> Mr. Lemon's generous support is the reason we're able to bring the Speaker Series to Daytona State. As one of the nation's leading entrepreneurs, Gail Lemon has founded more than 100 successful businesses, served as vice chair of our district board of trustees, and as a philanthropist to many colleges and civic programs in our area. Mr. Lemon has also funded these scholarships to help Daytona State students who are aspiring entrepreneurs, and more than 50 have been awarded since the program was established in 2007. These students are selected based on the professor's recommendation and class performance. Gail, would you like care to say a few words before we name our music? Number one, I've got to explain this cane. I've only used it for about four days now, 
my uh, fiance decided that I needed the cane so that I wouldn't fall in my head. <laughs> so uh, here I am with the cane and I'm uh, it very well. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, thank thank you guys uh, very much for being here. We really appreciate the attendance and participation of, of everybody. I um, just started thinking about this last night, and I did jot down a few words to say. And I think Tom covered uh, about half of what I was going to say, and the other half is I didn't put in bold print, so I can't read it. Uh, here I am. Uh, I want to mention, Tom mentioned Bernie Simpkins. What a great entrepreneur. I thought I was a, an entrepreneur until, entrepreneur until I met Bernie. And everyone should have had a chance to spend some time with that man. He's unbelievable. Uh, spending one hour with Bernie Simpkins would take you a year. Uh, uh, out in this world to, to learn what he uh, told you in one hour. Uh, anyway, about uh, 13 years ago, um, I'm so honored when Bernie asked me to speak uh, at his uh, entrepreneurial uh, series down in Coco and in Melbourne. And um, it was uh, shortly after I uh, started dating his beautiful daughter, Jill. And I think Jill had a lot to do with that invitation. Prior, prior to uh, my speaking, um, every uh, entrepreneur that was in his program had, had national uh, uh, recognition, like Truett Cathy of Chick-fil-A, people like that. And so, boy, for, for, for me, I was really honored when, when they asked me to, uh, to participate in the program. Um, anyway, I don't read your notes. I can read your notes, I can't read mine. Uh, anyway, yeah, I, I am an entrepreneur. I started my first business when I was 40, and uh, frankly, I've been uh, living the American dream uh, ever since. It started out very well and continued for many years to do well. And the main reason for that, I believe, is people. I surrounded myself with some real great people, worked hard with them, shoulder to shoulder, and, and paid them very well along the way. And I think that is the secret uh, for success as an entrepreneur. Associate with, with only good, hardworking people, and uh, that's the first step uh, along the way. Um, Like I said, uh, uh, I've been living, living the American dream only in America. I was raised in, I was in a very poor family in the upper peninsula of Michigan and uh, didn't, didn't have the privilege of going to, uh, to school, to college. I made it through high school and then was in, ended up in the Merchant Marine in four years in the Air Force and then a lot of sales. So I was 40 before I, I uh, took the plunge and went in business. And uh, it was a real, real good deal. Uh, and um, several of, of my associates became millionaires um, through, through our association. I'm so, so proud of that. Um, I'm also proud of the students that are receiving these uh, scholarships. I think it is wonderful. Um, and I, I want to thank you, you guys for uh, selecting Daytona State College for your continuing education. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful school. It's a, it's a uh, diamond in our community. And uh, thanks to, to the leadership of Dr. Lavasso and the, the, the rest of the staff uh, of the college, I appreciate uh, the continuing uh, presentation of the, of the, of the series, uh, hopefully every spring and fall in the, in the far distant future, uh, it, it will, will have that. I um, just want to say a couple of words here. I say, continue your education. I think that's paramount. 
and I mentioned surround yourself with only the best friends and associates and work hard, work hard and show leadership to your team by working with them and paying them very well on your way to success. Thank you, Gail. Uh, and, and again, thank you for sponsoring this this program. He's a modest person. Uh, I mean, just the, the, the amount of impact he's had in this community, uh, businesses, a diversity of businesses, from insulation companies to restaurants, and uh, and I probably can't name you know uh, uh, 20 other ones that he, he's done. But uh, always successful, takes care of people. Uh, and, and has been very generous to the college and to take care of students. So, Gail, you know, on behalf of myself and the Board of Trustees, we thank you so much for your, for your generosity. Thank you. And he didn't mention, although he mentioned in his talk, he has a book that he wrote, uh, Bet on the Johnny. And that was, you know, his way of whatever you're saying about how he hired good people around him. And, and, and invested in those people. So he, he, uh, it's a great book to read if you get a chance to, to do that. And, uh, and since he shuffled my notes, let me go back to... Uh, <laughs> no, we're good. All righty. At this time, though, we would like to present the scholarships and take photos of the winners. So please join us as I call your name. Ginger Johnson. So we're going to go to uh, Sherry Williams. She enrolled in the culinary program in January of 2021 after overcoming some unexpected struggles and hurdles in her life. Her entrepreneurial goal is to establish, own, and operate a pay it forward restaurant. The idea combines her passion for cooking and her desire to help those less fortunate in our community. Sherry, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. And now the thunderous roar, roar for Ginger Johnson. Come on up.
you just stay here for one moment, we can introduce you. All right, Ginger Johnson is a student at Deland High School and uses her photography skills for the yearbook class, taking pictures of sports and student activities. Ginger describes being in a family of entrepreneurs and how growing founded by entrepreneurs has exposed her to the determination, hustle, and resourcefulness she needs to succeed. She has already invested in professional photography equipment and editing software, and is now showcasing her portfolio of work to, online, to an online audience. <clears throat> she plans to attend Daytona State to help grow her network with students and other entrepreneurs while continuing to develop her photography career. Congratulations, Ginger. Stay for one more moment. Okay. Emily Houston, who currently works at uh, Chick fil A, was promoted into a leadership role at, at the restaurant. She has implemented new methods to lower costs and increase efficiencies, as well as having created full training plans for new hires. Using this expertise gained from the real world, em uh, Amelia's, I'm sorry, Emily, excuse me, Amelia's goal is to complete her degree, become an actuary and eventually to own her own consulting firm. As a student, she is paying her own, for her own textbooks, and this scholarship will help cover the cost of that expense. Congratulations, Amelia. <laughs> All right, I've got a few minute warning, so we're gonna have to try to go here. We have um, Michelle Zahn-Francois. Michelle Jean Francois is a mother of six and embraces the challenges she has had to face in her life. She decided to return to school and pursue her dream of becoming a chef with a long term goal of earning her Bachelor's of Applied Science and Supervision and Management degree with a hospitality concentration. This scholarship will help some of her expenses as she plans to open up her own restaurant. She is confident that the commitment and determination she found in the BAS program will also help her become a successful and self-sufficient business owner. Congratulations, Mitzel. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce to you our feature speaker this morning, Mr. Harris Rosen, President and COO of the Rosen Hotels and Resort. I hope you all are prepared to be as I was, inspired and fascinated by this incredible individual and what he has done. Mr. Rosen, I know you have shared it many times, but if you would be willing to share your journey from you know beginning in the corporate world to starting your own hotel and what that was like for you, that, that jump into the entrepreneurial experience, I know it would be inspiring to these students and all who are watching. Well, I appreciate your kind words. Um, it's a long story. <laughs> um, it started when I was born and raised in New York City's Lower East Side. My Dad's family came from Belarus. My mom's family came from Austria, Hungary. And it, as so many hundreds of thousands of immigrants from Eastern Europe, from Ireland, from Italy, they settled in the um, Not exactly an affluent uh, community. But that's where I was born, along with my brother. And that's where I grew up. 
and I think there were many benefits to growing up in a neighborhood like that. Uh, we always appreciated um, what, whatever good things would would, uh, would happen. Um, my brother and I went to school uh, in New York City, and somehow, to this day, I still don't understand why, but Cornell University accepted me in their School of Hotel Management. It's an interesting story because my dad worked at the Wall of Astoria Hotel as a sign painter and a safety uh, person. Uh, and on occasion, he would ask me to help uh, him on weekends uh, with little place cards that he would do for large banquets. My job was to erase the pencil he used to write the name on the place card. He would then go over it with India ink. My job was to erase the pencil, fold the card, and put it um, in a shoebox in alphabetical sequence. I mentioned this only because I worked for dad on weekends doing this. He paid me a penny a card. Sometimes there were several hundred cards and so I would earn several dollars, which meant so much to me in terms of what I could purchase at the corner drugstore. So anyway, one day we were taking the shoebox to the appropriate banquet room where the event was going to be scheduled. And we walked into the ele elevator and a very tall, distinguished gentleman was there with the most beautiful blonde lady I'd ever seen in my life. I was about 10 years old. And I asked dad if he would introduce me to the young lady and he said, sure, but he introduced me first to the gentleman. And the gentleman was, uh, Mr. Joseph Kennedy, um, the dad to President Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy, um, who was the ambassador to, um, I guess, Great Britain at that time. And then he introduced me to the young lady. He said, Harris, I'd like you to meet Marilyn Monroe. And um, she gave me a hug that I can still feel today. So when dad and I were talking after high school about what college I might want to apply to. Um, of course, uh, my dad was uh, an artist uh, and I had his artistic abilities as well. I went to music and art high school in New York and we were applying to fine arts colleges, but I remembered Marilyn and I thought, boy, it would be fun to study hotel management and I asked dad if he would mind if I apply to a, a hospitality college and he said of course not. So I applied to Cornell and was shocked when I was accepted. So I spent four years at Cornell. Uh, Vietnam was heating up a bit and so I thought if I'm going to serve I might as well serve as uh, an officer. So I went through four years of ROTC training. When I graduated, um, I graduated and earned my second lieutenant bars. And I immediately went into the army and um, was shipped overseas not to Vietnam, where I thought I was, yeah, and then ultimately to uh, Germany. I left the Army after three and a half years of service as a first lieutenant. I did my basic training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and I still enjoy jumping out of airplanes. <laughs> and so I started my career in hospitality, uh, where my dad had worked for about 30 years at the Waldorf Astoria. 
and the only jobs they had available were jobs uh, that were probably not what I was hoping for, but I didn't care. I said, I'll start anywhere. And so I started uh, on the fourth floor, which was where all of the small meetings occurred. And my job was to help set up meetings, uh, which I did. One day, a gentleman uh, walked by one of the rooms I was working in. And he said, hi, uh, my name is Sal Vedini. I'm the director of sales. What, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm part of the setup team. He said, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. And I, I told him that I just came out of the army as an officer. I told him that I went to Cornell for four years and had a degree in hospitality management. And he said, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, he said, tell you what, the next opening I have in sales, I will make sure that uh, you receive that job. It wasn't very long before Mr. Levaditi came to me and said, one of my guys just left. I'd like you to join the sales team. And that was really the beginning of my career. Um, I um, stayed at the Waldorf for um, a couple of years, and then they assigned me to the uh, management training team where I would have an opportunity to work for about four or five or six months in various hotels. Um, and I did. I wound up um, in um, Texas and Dallas as the assistant general manager of the Dallas Stadler Hotel. Uh, a gentleman who I worked with, a very successful insurance executive, he owned his own insurance company, came to me one day and he said, Harris, I've been given an opportunity to purchase a little hotel in Acapulco. He said, I'd like you to take a look at it and become my general manager. I did take a look at it. I fell in love with it and I became the general manager. Sadly, about a year after I accepted the position, it was really loving living in Mexico. Uh, a new president was selected, President H.A. Faria. And um, he made a change that affected my life. Uh, the change was that no non-Mexican national could own more than 49% uh, of real property. Uh, Mr. Post, my boss, had to sell 51% to a Mexican group. As soon as they took over ownership, I was fired. I drove to California and um, picked up the paper the next morning and it mentioned that Disney, located in Burbank, would be building a huge Disneyland in Orlando. I drove to Burbank, interviewed for the job. They said that they would interview me in New York City where they were doing all the final interviews. I drove from California to New York, spent some time with mom and dad, and then I interviewed again. I was told um, after the interview that I would be accepted as part of the hotel planning team for the hotels they would be building in Orlando. They asked me to come to California again and spend time with the architects. On my drive to California from New York, I had an accident um, in New Mexico and um, totaled my car, which was a little box of Volkswagen, which I purchased when I was in Germany. But put some stitches in my forehead and I flew to California, purchased a little car there, so I had transportation and began working for Disney. In the late 70s, I was uh, flown to Orlando to prepare for the final construction of the Disney properties and to help put a team together to operate uh, the properties. 
We opened in 1971, and uh, the first year was a very, very successful year um, for the hotels. They were running virtually full every single day. After I'd been there for a couple of years, I expected that maybe I would receive a nice pay increase at some point in time, but it didn't happen. And so I was very, very happy when I was asked to come in and talk to my boss's boss, which I did. Um, he sat me down uh, in his office and said, uh, you've done a good job for us, but we, we don't really think that you'll become a successful executive here. And so I was fired. Um, I didn't know what to do but I thought that maybe I could find something for myself. And so some of you may remember there was an oil embargo in the um, early to mid 70s, 1974. And so I walked around and drove around and looked for a little motel. Most of the properties were in serious financial condition because with an oil embargo, people couldn't buy gas. So I found a little motel in a very, very wonderful location. And uh, I went to visit and see if I might speak with the general manager or the owner. When I went to the front desk and I asked if the general manager or the owner was there, I was told that Mr. Morgan, the owner, was there. And uh, he came out to the lobby to greet me. I walked with him to his office. He asked me how he could help me. I told him I was looking to buy a hotel. He became very emotional, said that he was not an expert in hotel management, that he was there now because he had to terminate all of his management staff because occupancies were in the 15 to 20 percent range. He said he didn't know anything about managing hotels and would hope and pray that I would be able to purchase the property. He arranged for a meeting with the lender and I spent time with the lender and he was impressed with my um, credentials. He liked the fact that I went to Cornell when I was an officer in the Army, that I had a good career with uh, Hilton and that I did spend time at Disney also. And he said, Harris, we would love you to purchase this property. How much money do you have in the bank? And I said, uh, I've got about $20,000 that I saved over the years. He said, fine, uh, $20,000 will buy you the hotel and you assume the mortgage. I didn't really understand what assuming a mortgage was. I essentially thought I was buying the hotel for $20,000. When I went to my attorney to indicate that I had signed the agreement, he said, you know what you signed? And I said, yes, I bought the hotel for $20,000. He said, no, he bought it for $2,020,000. And he explained to me what the mortgage was all about. Oh boy, I was in a panic mode. I didn't know what to do, but I did have an idea. Hotels were doing very badly because people couldn't buy gasoline. But I knew that the motor coach industry was still thriving because gas stations would sell to their favorite customer, the motor coach companies. And so I planned a trip to New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts to talk to the top motor coach companies in each of those areas. When I arrived, I met with the folks first in New York City. Mr. Rosen, can I, I interrupt you just for a second? How did you sure. get to New York? Share, share with, oh. share with them how you how you actually got to New York and got to these different well, locations. I, I did, and I, I, you know, I apologize for. No, I, no. Excuse me. <clears throat> but um, I couldn't afford to buy a plane ticket, so I thought I would hitchhike. And I went out on Interstate 4 and 
uh, had a sign that said heading to New York City, please help. And it wasn't very long before someone said, I'll take you to Jacksonville. And I said, that's wonderful. Got to Jacksonville, went out on the highway and somebody else came by and he said, if you share the driving with me, I'll drive you to the city where I'm headed. And that's how I got to New York City. And I met with the top motor coach folks there and I had a little card that I um, gave the owners uh, and the card was blank except it had my name on it. It was like a business card. And um, uh, Mr. Kasser was the first one I met with and he said, what do I do with the card? I said, sir, you write the room rate that you want to pay for two years. I will honor it for two years. He said, what rate? I said, whatever room rate you want. He wrote down $7.50 a night. I shook his hand and I said, I will send you a contract when I get back to Central Florida. He said, great. I, I then visited uh, Liberty Go Go and, and Joe Kastner and he did the same thing, $7.50. I, I then asked if they knew the best way to get to New Jersey and said, sure, we have buses that are headed there and we'll take you. They said, where are you going? I said to Domenico Tours in New Jersey. I met with Vince Domenico, gave him a card, and he wrote a rate down. I think it was about 775. He then said, Harris, where are you going now? And I said, I'm headed to Massachusetts. He said, I've got buses going there. We'll take you there. I went to Paragon Tours and Crimson Tours, met with the ownership and gave them cards, and they also signed the cards. Paragon Tours with the Pendler family um, asked, how I was going to get back to Orlando and I said my thumb they said no no we'll find someone who's headed to Florida and they'll drop you off and they did a couple that drove on their way to Miami they dropped me off at Orlando they were my guest until they both passed uh, every year for two weeks at my little quality and property I got back to uh, Orlando and sent immediately sent uh, a contract to the five motor coach companies that I spent time with. They signed them and within a very short period of time, the buses started to come. In order to save money, I did a lot of different jobs. I lived uh, in the hotel. I lived in the hotel for about 16 years. Um, I was the uh, breakfast um, server. I was the carver at night. Um, I did all of the landscaping. Um, I was head of security. I didn't feel that I was capable of doing the job myself. So I thought I would buy a German Shepherd who might become my chief of security. In the paper, there was an ad about a German Shepherd for sale, a family leaving Orlando. I visited them. They introduced me to Rin Tin Tin, their German Shepherd. I immediately fell in love with him and I asked, uh, can I purchase him? They said, of course, we can't take a dog along with us. Uh, we're looking for a new job out of state. And I said, well, how much do you want for renting? They said, can you give us $100? And I said, no, I'll give you $300. And they both started to cry. And so now I had my chief of security. Renee and I went back to the hotel. He lived with me in my little room at the property. And he stayed with me until he turned 14 and, and passed. And so that was the first property I purchased. The buses started storming in. Um, it was interesting because other lenders would see how busy we were and they would come over and ask me if I wanted to buy any more hotels. I said no. But after about six months, seven months, things were going really well. I thought I could replicate what I had done at another property. The two gentlemen from Boston came by. They met with me. They were lenders. They said, come, we want to show you a little hotel. They did. It was not more than two or three minutes away by car. 
it was called the Solage. Um, I said, well, how much do you want for it? And they told me, and I said, I don't have any money. Uh, what if I manage the property for five years? You pay me a management fee and uh, I will give you the fee back and you will match it. And at the end of five years, uh, I will be able to deduct from the mortgage what I give you and what you add to that. At the end of five years, I had enough to pay off the mortgage. And so in five years, I then owned um, the property. But I operated the property a, 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 exactly a year after I acquired my little quality in. So one. from being terminated to now the owner of two properties. Well, that's a long story. I apologize. Well, that's quite all right. Fascinating, always. I'm, I'm curious. Um, to scale any business, whether it's hospitality, technology, doesn't matter. Um, establishing uh, processes, best practices is a major component in that success. Uh, talk for a moment about how your leadership philosophy, your leadership style is reflected in how you train and sort of create an updraft for the people within your organization. Well, I'm, I must confess that spending time uh, with Uncle Sam taught me a number of lessons. And there are two things I never forget. One is KISS, keep it simple, stupid. And the other is PPP, PPP, prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And I know that sounds overly simplistic, but it really isn't. Plan, 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 and don't get complicated. And I've, I've tried to uh, remember those two philosophies over the years, and they have brought me um, the success that I have today. Don't get complicated. Also, I believe in treating people kindly. Uh, we don't call our associates employees. We call them associates, and we love them, and we treat them like family members as they should be treated. And after 47 years, uh, many of our associates are still with us uh, in hospitality. Um, turnover is a, a significant problem. Um, we have longevity that is uh, unmatched. Many of our associates have been with us for 20, 25, some 30 and some even 40 years. And we're very, very proud of that. So, Mr. Rosen, would you take uh, just a moment to share with everybody what what some of those incentives are that you have built into sort of the culture of Rosen sure. Hotels? I appreciate that. Um, if you work for me for three years and you would like to go to a public college here in Florida, I will pay your tuition. If you have children that are also in college, I'll pay their tuition. We have our own medical center. We've had it for 30 years. And um, uh, if you have a prescription and you go to Walmart, you can pick up the prescription 90, 95% without any cost at all, I pay. If you're in the hospital, the most you'll pay is $750 for one visit and then for a second visit. And after that, you don't pay anything. We did have a little preemie born a number of years ago mom and the baby uh, the baby weighed around two pounds mom and the baby uh, were in the hospital for about two and a half three months the bill was a million forty one thousand dollars i remember that because i paid it mom and dad paid seven hundred fifty dollars um, so i i think that our philosophy is a, is a little bit different than some other uh, organizations but we do that because we love our associates and we want to uh, make sure that they're comfortable and happy working with us. About a third of our associates from Haiti. We've been to Haiti a number of times. Uh, the last time we were there was after Hurricane Matthew and we rebuilt from scratch 105 homes that were devastated by uh, the hurricane. Recently, uh, poor Haiti has undergone a major disaster and we have a ship loaded with all kinds of supplies 
ready to head to Haiti as soon as they uh, will open their borders and accept us. So yes, we're different because we love our associates. We treat them as family. And I think that has um, helped us tremendously. Mr. Rosen, you, you started your business in a very difficult time, a time that I remember, but most of our audience does not, but they're living through something that I think we never imagined, which is this current pandemic and the impact it's had on the hospitality industry. Could you talk for just a second about, this was a question from one of the students, um, the resiliency of the industry, what you see in terms of a comeback? Well, every time I think, uh that things are improving, uh, there's bad news. Uh, after July, I thought things were pretty much back on track, but then things crashed with a, another COVID wave. My fear is that we'll have another COVID wave, and so I don't want to get too excited about the improvements that we're seeing right now. My hope and my prayer is that within a relatively short period of time, perhaps a year or two, uh, things will get back to normal. I hope and pray that that happens. Uh, the last two years have been absolutely horrific. Never have we lived through uh, such a horrible situation as uh, COVID has brought to the forefront. Um, I do remember uh, many, many years ago, sitting with my two granddads from Eastern Europe, they lost everything during the depression in 29. They said that I would be a very successful businessman because I had something special in my genes that they passed on to me. And they also said that don't make the mistake that we made, we borrowed money. And so I went to bed that night and mom took me in as she always did. And she said, Harris, why aren't you wearing your pajamas? Why are you wearing your jeans? And I said, oh, mom, my two granddaddies said I had something special in my genes. <laughs> well, she explained she explained to me what the situation was, but I, I did never forget that they told me that I should not borrow money. Of course, I had to, but about 16 years ago, we paid off all of our debt. And to be quite frank with you, that is what kept us alive, what is keeping us alive during the pandemic, the fact that we don't have 40, 50, 60, $100 million in mm -hmm. principal and interest to make every year. Right, right. Could you could you tell everyone the, the scope of your hotel family? Um, how many properties, approximately how many employees and what, what's the capacity if you're if you're full? Well, um, we did have eight properties, but we're closing one. We, we purchased the property, not for the property, uh, about two years ago, but because we needed the land, the acreage, to expand uh, Rosen Center Hotel. COVID came along about six months after we made the purchase. Um, and so now we have seven properties with close to 7,000 rooms. And um, we, when, when things are normal, we probably have close to 5,000 associates. Right now, we probably have around 2,500 occupancies are in the 40 to 50 percent range now. Previously, for about 25 years, we were in the mid 90 percent range. So it has had a devastating effect on our occupancies and we've we're not quite back to full strength yet. But my hope, my prayer is that things will improve. Sure. I know two projects, you, you alluded to your involvement in Haiti, and I have read about that and, and so commend you on that, but two projects right here in Central Florida. One is the Rosen School of Hospitality, and the other is a project that you're involved with and have been involved with at some time now in Tangelo Park. I know Tangelo Park is a neighborhood that geographically is in close proximity to where many of your properties are. Can you just briefly explain your involvement there and how you got involved and, and what's happened? Well, 30 years ago, sitting at my desk, I 
suddenly thought that it was a time for me to say thank you, God, and to um, offer a helping hand to those in need. I called a couple of um, education experts, Bill Spoon and Sarah Sprinkle. Sarah, early childhood expert, Bill, principal of one of the large high schools here in town. And within a very short period of time, we created what is now called the Tangela Park slash Paramore program. Free preschool for all of the two, three and four year olds in both neighborhoods, Tangela Park and Paramore. And um, work with uh, the parents, work with the children to make sure that they do well in elementary school, middle school and high school. The goal is for 100% graduation from high school and we have achieved that in both neighborhoods. And then if the youngsters are accepted to uh, community college or four-year college here in Florida or, or to a trade school, uh, we take care of all of their all of their expenses, every bit of them, uh, books or tuition, whatever. So when they leave college, they don't owe a penny. And we do that in two neighborhoods, Tangela Park and Paramore. Tangela Park for about 30 years, Paramore for about seven years. Uh, recently, Travel and Leisure a Hospitality Company adopted the Edenville neighborhood mm -hmm. and uh, using our template, uh, they will do free preschool and free college. We do have another organization from Fort Wayne, Indiana that has expressed a, a very keen interest in adopting a community at, at Fort Wayne and another uh, group also in Indiana that have expressed an interest in replicating the program. I know this is going to sound a bit bold, but I do believe, not in my lifetime, but I do believe that if every underserved community in the world, well, let's start here in America, uh, if every underserved community had a Tangelo Park program, we would not recognize America. We would change America so dramatically and so much for the better that we'd be the envy of the whole world. And that's my hope. That's my prayer. That's my dream. Mr. Rosen, I know you're the type of person where um, even uh, setbacks, uh, you, you look at the opportunity that those setbacks may present. But I was just wondering, if you were able to give advice to your 18, 22 year old self, what advice would you impart? If you could hop in the DeLorean and you know go back in time, uh, what might you say to you? You know, that's a, that's a great question, but I must confess that the answer is a simple one. I would say, Harris, do what you do. Nobody that I'm aware of works as hard as we do. I haven't had a day off probably in the last two years. Um, and, and, and so hard work is important. Treating people the way you would like to be treated is important. Um, and, and being um, kind to those who need a helping hand. It's not very complicated. And so I don't think I would tell myself anything other than get back on the track you were on Harris and don't give up and don't give up work hard and um, and I think I've been blessed and so I wouldn't want to change anything have there been some difficulties some trying circumstances of course but that's all part of life sure well let, let me ask you this um, Biggest mistake or failure setback you ever had that that turned into an opportunity that you did not at all see at the time you were in it? I'm just curious. Well, you, you know, I've been blessed because uh, virtually every initiative that we started uh, became uh, successful with a lot of hard work. Uh, of course, COVID has been devastating. And um, I just hope and pray that at some point in time, um, it is over. I do believe that we'll all have to be, uh, 
vaccinated uh, every year like we are with the flu um, to prevent COVID um, until there's a permanent solution like there was with the polio vaccine. But no, I, I've been blessed beyond anything I could imagine and um, I, I don't think I'd change anything. The advice I would, would give to individuals is don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, life is not easy. There are a lot of ups and downs. Be prepared for the downs. Be prepared for the ups. And uh, as I said, always try to treat those around you with respect and dignity and kindness. I just had two more questions. Um, you, you did a great job of breaking down what started at Tangelo Park and how that is being replicated nationally and hopefully internationally as you envision. Um, the Rosen School of Hospitality, how did, how did that get started and what was the genesis of that and how has that expanded and where do you see that going? Yeah, that's, that's a great question also. Um, I got a call one day, um, maybe around 20 years ago, from Dr. A. Bazam. He was at University of Central Florida and uh, teaching hospitality management. Um, he came to Orlando to teach hospitality management, believing that because this was the epicenter of hospitality, attractions, hotels, um, he thought that wonderful things would evolve but he called me and he said, can we sit down and talk? And I said, sure. We sat down in one of our restaurants and he said, I'm probably going to leave Orlando um, because I don't think that um, the hospitality program um, in where I am is, is, is going to evolve into something that I've dreamed of. And I said, what is it that you're dreaming of, babe? He said, one day, having a college here in Central Florida, a hospitality college would absolutely be mind boggling. I don't know why, I don't know what prompted me to say it, but I knew Abe, I, I knew how sad he was. And I said, Abe, I'll build you a hospitality college. He got emotional and hugged me. And he said, where? And I said, we've got some extra land near the Shingle Creek Resort and we'll donate that and we'll all get together and start designing a school. And we did. <laughs> and today, uh, the Rosen College is ranked number one in America and number two in the world in hospitality management. Uh, we've actually- Congratulations. Surpassed, <laughs> we surpassed our friends at Cornell I don't know how they feel about it. They've been around for about 50 years. They've been around for over 100 years. So yeah. anyway, uh, we're, we're delighted with the success that uh, Rosen College has achieved. Excellent. As I said, two questions, and, and here's the last one, and this comes from one of our students. They're, they're curious about, um, you, you've, you've been a marathoner in terms of your business success, and uh, your your professional achievements. Uh, how do you how do you avoid burnout? How do you avoid you know staying hungry, you know every day for for what you do? Uh, listen, I'm I'm 82 years old now. Um, I can't imagine how much longer I'm I'm going to be doing this. I, I know I will be here until we're back to normal, but um, I try to stay fit um, as best I can. I know you're an active but swimmer. I, yes, I, I do. I swim a mile and a quarter five days a week at the aquatic center, which we now manage. Uh, and own. Um, you, you, you just have to hang on and do the best you can. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Uh, I, I don't, I will not leave until we're back to normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how long that's going to take. 
Well, Mr. Rosen, I, I think I speak for everyone at Eastern Florida State College as well as Daytona State College and all the students and the people who are watching today uh, that um, you have exceeded all expectations in what you have presented to us and you're just a sterling example of what can be done and what should be done uh, by entrepreneurs everywhere whether it's as extensive as you've been able to do or, or just in a small way of, of helping your employees be all they can be and so i just want to say thank you appreciate your time so much my pleasure sir and god bless thank you sir god bless you I think each and every one of us, wherever we are in our entrepreneurial journey, can take heart, uh, encouragement, as well as knowledge based on the things that Mr. Rosen shared. And um, I, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, future Simpkins uh, opportunities like this. And I believe uh, Winston Scott may be on the docket for the next uh, Simpkins series uh, speaker. I know Winston, a fabulous person, as well as an incredible, incredible professional, pilot, aviator, astronaut, and of course, the contribution he's made to the uh, Florida Institute of Technology has just been incredible. So thank you for being with us today and God bless. That's terrific, and um, looks like the technology actually works. Uh, we have another uh, really kind of fun treat. Uh, we're going to kind of continue the hospitality theme, uh, which is pretty awesome. So um, I'm going to bring to the stage uh, one of our local heroes here. And um, it's, uh, this is our ACF certified executive chef, certified culinary educator, and fellow of the Academy of Chefs, or Amer American Academy of Chefs. That was a lot to say. Uh, but also uh, one of our local heroes and a friend of mine. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion, so I'm going to let him kind of explain what it is. And it's uh, Chef Margolis. Thank you, thank you. We have a few more minutes to talk a little bit, but before we do that, I don't know about y'all, but let's take 10 seconds. I'm gonna stand up and stretch a little bit. I know you kind of get a little sleepy in the rear end there. <laughs> Just take a minute and then we'll get right started again. Okay, don't get spoiled. Sit down. <laughs> I'd like to quickly introduce our two speakers. We're very fortunate to have representatives of the hospitality industry here in Coastal County. Two very important people that we're very happy to have here today. Uh, first, Mr. Bob Davis, the CEO of the Los County Lodging and Hospitality Association. John Beltro, Area General Manager, Daytona Beach Regency, Code DRI, Daytona Beach, Florida. Before we get started, we'd like to thank Mr. Limeron for his great contribution to all the students here in Lewis County. You know, as educators, we really see what happens with those kids, and uh, it, it really is special what you're doing. Thank you. We really appreciate that. We're also very fortunate to have Daytona State College here, which I am a graduate of. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to talk about hospitality, and what we're going to do here very quickly is I would like uh, both of our speakers today to tell us a little bit about themselves, how they got into the industry, and uh, what their background was, and how they got into it, and how they feel about it. And we're going to start with Mr. Bob Davis. Well, good morning, everybody, and it's so great to see so many wonderful, smiling, entrepreneurial faces. 
And this would have never, never been had it not been for this great gentleman sitting here in front of me, who I know gives so much to this community and uh, wants to share his uh, being with you all. And you just saw the master of it all, Rose, and did a fantastic job. As to me, well, I started in Brooklyn, New York as a 12 year old, got on the bus, went upstate New York to magical, what they call the uh, Catskill Mountains, where there was huge hotels, grossingers and the Concord 3000 guests and all that, and was given a metal tray and was given rocks on top of it. It was 102 degrees outside. And I carried this little tray around the dining room and the owner said, if you drop it, we didn't have bus buckets then, uh, get back on the bus and head back to Brooklyn. Well, this little 12 year old was struggling in the heat. I survived and I started my career as a bus boy, a dishwasher. Uh, if you recall those uh, tile floors, they had these big machines that you had to buff the floor every night with. It took me through the wall every day. I couldn't handle it. But I survived, became a social director, major D, a general manager of a thousand room hotel. And uh, I failed math in school. Uh, I've been here 55 years and I'm only 39 years old, Gail, on one leg. But at any rate, uh, the career path in um, hospitality Gail said it, Rosen said it, you'll hear it every day of your life. Nobody hands you the golden medal and tells you, here's your restaurant and here's your hotel. Work, work, but you know, he said something from the Bible that's very, very important. Uh, and I've studied just about everybody's religion and the key words that come out of the Bible for everybody is treat your neighbor as you would like to be treated. That's what Gail and Ron's done, that's what Rogan's done. I even go back further, treat everybody in the marketplace as you would like to be treated. That's from the Old Testament, we traded animals for water and milk. And so ladies and gentlemen, you heard two different people from two different aspects of life. And they both said, treat your people and work with them. Gail told you that he only hires the best managers, and that's true. And you have to work hard to be a good manager. Just saying, I know what the bottom line is, I know what the score sheet is, but remember whence you came from and how you got there, and those same people are in your path. Not a whole lot about me. I've been in Daytona Beach, I've run hotels, I run the Hotel and Lodging Association, I'm a trustee of your I'm going to differ with uh, uh, Mr. Rosen in one thing. The best culinary hospitality school in the state of Florida is right here at Daytona State. Thank you, Bob. John, you want to join in? Absolutely. Good morning, folks. My name is John Petros. I serve as general manager at the Daytona Beach Regency in Cove on Ormond Beach. Um, I started my career very simply. I was a tennis court boy. Um, we, I worked at a, a hotel that uh, my mother made me take tennis lessons, and I didn't want to take tennis lessons. And the tennis pro said, I'll give you 20 bucks a week if you come after school and do the tennis courts. Uh, sadly, my father passed away when I was 15. And uh, all the rich people would go, uh, boy, get my court ready. And they'd shake my hand and I'd look, there's a $5 bill, which back then was a lot of money. <laughs> so I like that. I got into food and beverage and was a, a server, a, a banquet prep, uh, liked front desk, so they put me on the front desk. Security, uh, accounting, uh, and, and I've had a lot of people help me along my way, help me along my journey. Um, something that, that um, Gail said that, that really stuck with me and, and I, I will remember it, 
is surround yourself with good people. Fair enough. Smart, right? Students, pay attention to me right now. Find people like Chef Costa, Bob Davis, Gail, Mr. Rosen. Go to them and say, help me. They'll think, you know, Bob Davis, Chef Costa, he doesn't have time for me. Gail, he's running all kinds of restaurants. He doesn't have time for me. Guess what? They will make the time. Surround yourself with good managers, good leaders as you go along your journey. It will pay off tenfold. I worked as a ballet and I'm going to end on this. And it was a big hotel. And, and again, the, back then the general managers, you know, were, you know, you never saw them. And if you did, you better be on point. So this was rare. We had radios back then, but we'd hear code yellow, which means all the executives were done with their meeting with the rooftop bar and were coming down. And we stood with our shoulders back, arms crossed, and the vice president of food and beverage, he said, boy, boy, call me a cab. To this day, I don't know why I did it, but I was 17 and I said, okay, you're a cat. <laughs> My supervisor came over and said, oh, sir, John thinks he's funny and he's not. He said, quiet. Boy, what did you say? He said, well, you said, boy, I'm a boy said, call you a cab, so okay, you're a cab. <laughs> that man took me under his wing, and he was the toughest, one of the toughest managers ever. But he made me go up to his office every week and give him a report as to how I was doing. Um, sadly, and I don't want to get emotional, he recently died, but he was the one that I would go, hey, Mr. Ben, look, 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 I'm the assistant general manager now. Go oh, good, stay on your journey. Mr. Ben, look, I'm the general manager now. Well done, keep going. So surround yourself with leaders like Bob, Chef Costas, Gail. Be the manager, the leader that they are. Surpass them. I love it. Thank you. Uh, you know, I want to tell you something real quick. Uh, I started on a milk crate in the kitchen, okay? My dad made me wash dishes and you guys ran around doing other stuff, okay? Sorry. That's the way it is in the kitchen, right, gang? All right. Very quickly, uh, we have a couple questions that we'd like to address. Uh, before we get started, there's one thing I'd like to address. I don't know if you've looked at our facility, some visitors here, you need to check out this campus. <clears throat> it is something that you won't see in other campuses. We have really state-of-the-art facilities in all our uh, programs. And if you want, after this, we'll be having a tour of this building as well, more at Husseini College of Hospitality. Now, just for the record, okay, we're a little bit prejudiced about what we talk about. Hospitality is the number one employer in Volusia County. It is the number one employer in the state of Florida. That's how important that industry is. Now, Bob and John, would y'all just briefly tell us a little bit about what you think the future trends is going to be in Volusia County and make the state in well, hospitality? It's, it's kind of contradictive to what Mr. Rosen said, and, and there's a reason for that. And I'm not going to preach here and, and signal since March of uh, this past year, of course, the nine months of COVID were devastating. Uh, so many people got laid off. So many people became homeless. Gail, myself, John, other organizations uh, bled and tried to help our employees with no place to go. And, and, and that's past us. 
And once the motorcycle week hit on March till Labor Day, uh, we saw a phenomenon that we've never seen before in our lives. Whether it's government affiliated, whether it's people being home, whether they were boxed in for too long, whether children, uh, it was more of a human, humanistic uh, happening. And the industry uh, did extremely, extremely well from March to Labor Day. It was just extraordinary and amazing how many guests we get. Very simply put, Miami shut their beaches and their airlines were shut down and so people couldn't travel. Tampa Airport was shut down and they shut their beaches. Orlando was shut down because all of the amusement parks were shut down and what they rely on uh, was air traffic. I mean, Orlando, 82.2 million visitors, the largest destination in the world. And so I can understand where Rosen is coming from. On the reverse side, Daytona Beach has always been a drive to market. And so we benefited. And then, of course, there was COVID funds and people came. Uh, people worked from hotel rooms. We saw a great influx of uh, computer work and children work from their rooms. And so even though we now have flights to Dallas, Philadelphia, very shortly Chicago, we're improving with the new director at the airport of more flights into this great community. We had one of the best seasons we've ever seen. The problem was regaining our employees, teaching them that we are back open and that they have a job and a better job than they had been before. That lesson is a little difficult right now, but uh, I just got the report uh, early this morning. I'm at my desk at 5.30. Um, that uh, Mr. Flora stated that the last quarter was better than 219. So tourism is on the rise, it's coming back. We all have to be protective, we all have to be careful, but it's, it's what Gail said, it's what John said, it's what Rosen said, it's what our president Tom Lovasso said. It, I don't care if it says the Regency, or the Plaza Hotel, or the Hilton. It should say hospitality. That's the industry that you're in. And remember, each one of you in this room may be an interior decorator, may be a, an, an accountant, may be a maintenance engineer. That's all in the restaurants and hotel industry. It's not just about cooks and servers. It's what you give. And it's the hospitality that you present at the front desk. Just yesterday, I was at the uh, Daytona Plaza Hotel with uh, some owners that came in from Boston. And I said, look at your front desk. There's not a smiling face there. There's not a greeting there. And that's what we are. We're about hospitality. The young lady that wants to build a restaurant uh, and bring in local people to a restaurant. It's reaching out. When somebody visits you, an aunt, an uncle, your parents, to your home, to your apartment, that's called hospitality. It doesn't say Holiday Inn. It doesn't say Comfort Inn. That's what you represent. And if you carry that forth, you'll be successful. But remember this, nobody's born a general manager or an entrepreneur. You've got to work. You've got to roll up your sleeves. But remember the people around you. They are just as important as you. John. Bob, I really, I really don't have anything more. Uh, you, you, you pretty much nailed it. Uh, hospitality is is a wonderful field. Um, and and again, whether you're a server, whether you are a front desk agent, whether you are a maintenance technician, that's something I practice, I preach time and time and time again to my team. Don't lose the opportunity to be a hero to your guests. I had a guest come up to me and say, I want to, I want to ask you what, what you're doing. I, I, I said, ma'am, she goes, I was at Joe's Crab Shack and one of your maintenance men came up to me, saw my, my ID band 
and said, thank you for staying with us, enjoy your meal. That's building a relationship with your guests. Something else, don't be afraid to work hard. I, I've, I've washed dishes, I've mowed grass, don't be afraid to work hard. Um, very quickly, Bob, I need to ask you something real quick. He's on top of everything that happens in the Loops County. Can you tell us some of the exciting things that are happening in the county, the improvements of hotels, just very briefly? A lot of people don't realize what's happening in our industry. There's so many. Where should I start? There's, uh, as I said to the news show a couple of weeks ago, uh, Volusia County, Daytona Beach is about to explode. Uh, again, I've been here 55 years. I'm only 39 years old. I'm as old as my two years old, Gail. Uh, there's just unbelievable. Uh, starting with the Plaza Hotel, the revamping of a $45 million gem with all sorts of restaurants and gift shops and wine shops on the street, the opening of, of the Max uh, Daytona, which is almost on the shores, the Renaissance Hotel, very few cities in America have a Marriott Renaissance next door to the plaza. Uh, I heard about three uh, oceanfront dining experiences. Look at where you're sitting right now and look that way. And you'll see a student union building, $39 million, our great friend Gail Lenron and our great president put together. Beyond that, student housing. Just look around Volusia County and see the birth and what's going on. You are sitting on the edge of a career that you could go any place you propose to go if you roll up your sleeves. I hope it's in hospitality. I hope it's in restaurants, but if not, there are other great areas that we depend on. I have 100 members of hotels, but I have 150 allied members. Why? The man who lays the carpet, the man who brings me the dishwashing soap, the man who does all the women who does that, all want to be part of the association. Up until the COVID, we employed 51,000 people in Volusia County out of 585,000 uh, in uh, uh, hospitality. There are great dreams, great careers. Nobody's going to hand it to you. You've got to go out and you've got to work for it. And you know, there's two sayings that I've learned in my career and that I used in the last 25 years. I met a black minister about 25 years ago. And he said, Bob, I'd like you to use these words. And you've got to think about what I'm going to say. If you can't change the friends around you, comma, change the friends around you. And that's not only for students, but that's for adults. If you can't change the friends around you, change the friends around you. At the same time, I met a Jewish rabbi. And he said, I would like you to use these words from the Old Testament. And I, my whole career, whenever I speak, I use these words. Words that come from the heart, enter the heart. No BS. And that's what Gail has learned all his life. Your president does and he sends people on the speakers. If you're going to talk, don't powder it. Don't put icing on the cake. Be truthful. And like Costa said or John said, we're all available. We're not untouchable. We're human beings. We're all breathing the same air. But you sit in one of the unbelievable things that have happened. I've been a trustee 12 years, and in the last five years, this college has grown, the programs have grown, the uh, uh, facilities have grown. Right now, you've got one of the championship uh, soccer women's tournament in the nation going on right down the street. Be proud of this college. Carry the banner high, because you deserve it and this college was in. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your time today. <laughs> that pretty much concludes our program for just a moment. Tom, did you want to say something in conclusion at all? We're good to go. And Tom, come on. Okay. Thank you all for coming and visiting us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Of course, you know our thanks to that, Mr. McMahon, President, and they don't stay college. Okay. Okay, take a look at it. Thanks.
Yeah, so last on the program, and what a, what a wonderful experience we had today. Sorry, we have the city commissioner. And please stand up, everybody. Awesome. So finally, wonderful program today, um, uh, made possible by Mr. Lemoran. As always, thank you, sir. Um, it's about entrepreneurialism, and I think it was awesome because you kind of heard it's certainly, it's certainly not easy, but oh so rewarding, right? And remember that entrepreneurialism is not a destination in any way. It is a journey. And so one thing that I would ask of you is some of the things you heard today, those were awesome nuggets. It was also, I heard a lot about mentorship, and uh, that, we talked about pathways, Dr. Rims is around here. It really is about that. Surround yourself with people smarter than you. Um, ask, say, how did you do it? It's super important. So grab that. If, if you grabbed a couple of things today, little nuggets, I would challenge you to think about those and see what you can do with those to make them, uh, to make a better version of yourself. So I'm uh, really excited. Thanks to all of you here in the room. It's a nice big crowd. Great to see you. And thanks to everybody online. A uh, wonderful series. And I guess we're going to see you all again in the spring. So thanks you all. Have a great day.